So I've recently made the switch from a more traditional style hiking boot to trail running shoes for my adventures. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about why I've gone down that route, some of the benefits that I've had, as well as highlighting some of the negatives about these shoes. So for most of my hiking, I've used a traditional style hiking boot that is quite stiff and has got ankle support built in. But a few months back, I was planning to hike the Cumbria Way and I wanted a shoe that was gonna be more comfortable for hiking 80 odd miles. So for a long time, I've suffered with knee pain, occasional pain in the hips, and especially on the downhill, my toes, they got a batter in in the, the normal style of hiking boots that I used. So I did quite a bit of research on how I could eliminate some of these aches and pains. And I came across a, quite a few good YouTube channels. Um, Chase Mountains, for example, they're big into health and well-being. And that led me to a load of information about the benefits of barefoot shoes and zero drop shoes. I'm not going to go into all of the science behind it, but as human beings, we're not designed to have our feet crammed into shoes with you know, pointy toes, with wedges on them to, to lift us up, arch support, all of that kind of thing. We are meant to walk flat on the ground. And that's where these shoes come into play. So the shoes that I went for are the Ultra Lone Peak 7s. So these shoes are really popular with the ultra long distance through hikers over in America. They are what's called a zero drop shoe. So a lot of the shoes that we wear nowadays, they have a, a wedge so your heel is lifted up, whereas these are the same level from the heel to the ball of your foot. They also have a really wide toe box here which allows your toes to spread out like that. A lot of shoes, they have your feet crunched up like this all the time. So basically you, you walk in like this and a human's biomechanics are not meant to work like that. You're supposed to be able to put your foot flat on the floor and your toes spread out naturally. And the science suggests that you know, it aligns your body up better. So things like your knees and hips will benefit tremendously from this kind of shoe. So you can go a lot more extreme than these shoes with a full on barefoot shoe, which is like a, a really thin layer of rubber. They're very flexible, but you feel everything under your feet, but it does make your foot stronger eventually. But with a full on barefoot shoe, you would feel every little imperfection in the ground. And uh, at least these ones have got, I think it's 25 mil of cushioning, but with all the benefits of having a zero drop, and a wide toe box. But it isn't that straightforward. Transitioning to a zero drop shoe does take time. You do have to build up the miles because your body is used to wearing things like your regular Nike trainers, which might have a, you know, an incline of seven millimeters. It doesn't sound a lot, but it makes a huge difference on how your body mechanics work. It took time for my feet to get stronger the lower calf and Achilles area, my ankles, these have all got stronger since I've been using this kind of footwear. So I bought these shoes specifically for the Cumbria way, which we did 81, 82 miles, I think it was. And to be honest, I hadn't put enough miles in to transition properly. So because my ankles and calves hadn't really strengthened, I did get a few aches and pains in those areas. So speaking of ankles, I was a little bit worried about the lack of ankle support, but I found that I never rolled an ankle once in over 80 miles. You sort of feel the ground better and you, you tend to grip it, it's weird. It's a weird sensation, but you feel more in tuned with where you're walking. I was really impressed with how they performed. I didn't get a single blister, no bruised toes, just a few achy muscles and the bottom of my feet did ache a little bit due to some of the cobbly areas. Because after a while, especially after you've been doing 10, 15 miles, you, know, you start to get a few sore spots in your bones. Although for shorter distances and regular day hikes, the cushioning has been spot on. But the real magic has happened with my knees and my hips. Since I've been wearing these, I've not had any knee pain any hip pain it's literally been life-changing and i've enjoyed my hiking so much more 
I do love these shoes, but they're not perfect for all hiking situations. These particular ones aren't waterproof. They are quick drying. So in boggy and really wet conditions, I'm going to probably be wearing the seal skin waterproof socks. Also, like I mentioned, they do take some breaking in and you can feel a few aches and pains in your bones of your feet if you're walking on cobbles and things like that. But I've got a fix for that, which I'll show you in a minute. So if you've probably gathered, I love these shoes and I now wear these every day. In fact, I don't wear regular trainers anymore. These are my daily drivers. So I've probably hiked 150 to 200 miles in them and I wear them every day. So they go on tarmac, supermarkets. Um, I don't know how many miles I've been on them. I bet it's 500 in all. Um, they are starting to wear a little bit on the tread. I'm not sure you know, how durable they would be if you going trail running or you give them a really hard time. I'm not saying that these are a miracle worker and they'll work for everybody, but they've pretty much cured my knee pain, which I'm so grateful of. I've put some of these little like sticky heel liners in there because I've got some sort of knobbly bit on my heel that wears holes in trainers there. So these haven't worn since I've put one of these in. So I mentioned about the, the cushioning this is how I fixed it for those longer hikes. <laughs> I bought some more. These ones are Ultra Olympus. Olympus 5, I think they are. Again, these are zero drop across there. But these ones have got 33 millimeters of cushion. So by all accounts from the reviews that these are the most comfortable Ultras you can get. They seem a little bit more reinforced around there as well but they are a little bit stiffer and the lone peaks for me yeah they're like slippers so hopefully these will bed in a little bit and be the same all right hope you found this video useful let me know what you think of trail running shoes for hiking thanks for watching see you next time